So welcome to Wyoming Web Ed Radio. This is James Capty, Wyoming teacher and leader of this ride today. I am accompanied by Joe, not Cowboy Joe, but Joe Schroer, my UW sidekick in this educational adventure. How you doing today, Joe? Doing real good, doing real good, James. Good to be here. Awesome. So we are about to ride out on an eight week adventure and that was long enough to die on the Oregon Trail, Joe. So who knows what might happen in this adventure? So let's take a second uh, to learn a little bit about your host. Uh, education is all about engagement and engagement starts with what we care about. So my only question for Joe today, just to, to get that started for us is, is what's the best part of being an educator, Joe? Well, you know, James, we've talked about this before, but you know, for me, I love, you know, helping kids understand, you know, what, what their naive conceptions are and then helping them grow into, you know, fully developed conceptions. You know, I, I say this in my classes a bunch, but kids have a lot of wrong ideas about the world. I, you know, they, they just do. Um, and, and I think, you know, part of what we do as educators is really try to engage them and help them make connections uh, between concepts and ideas so that they can, they can, you know, get to the right ideas of what, what we're doing here in the world. What about you, James? You know, it, it really for me is about ex lighting that passion, helping kids. Uh, oftentimes school becomes pretty boring and about jumping through hoops. So getting a chance to help them find a passion that connects with them, that leads them to more learning and leads them to more exploring uh, and, and get past just those notions that just as you're saying that we just take for granted and, and really looking at those things. But hey, that's enough about us. So let's get this show onto the dirt road. Head them up and move them out, James. Wild web ed, here we come. So Buffalo Bill Center of the West is right in our backyard in Wyoming. The Buffalo Bill Center of the West is the recipient of the TripAdvisor of X Award of Excellence for the past seven years running. It's an amazing museum if you have not had a chance to be there. It is truly a gem that is, is only comparable to the Smithsonian and some of the museums on the East Coast. But Joe, how many states have you been to? Uh, last count, a, a little over half, maybe 26, 27. I, I think you got a little bit of a lead on me, and, and, and that's okay. But the Buffalo Bill Center of the West has been in classrooms in every state in the U.S., as well as every province in Canada. Uh, I think we have absolutely something we can learn from all they've done. But in Wyoming, they've only been in contact with 1,500 students, which is a lot. But we have over, we have about 100,000 students. So there's a lot of students for us that are, are missing out, a lot of classrooms that are missing out on this resource. So this was, a, this was just a great way for us to kick off our season with a resource that's, that highlights so much of what the West is about and, and, and a great piece of Wyoming. And so as we go through this process, please share your questions, questions in the chat box, and we will work to work those into answers for you or get back to you with answers. So let's give a Wyoming web ed welcome to George Miller from the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. Howdy, George. Hi, guys. How are you? Good to see you today. Good to see you, George. So we are really excited to have you on, George. And so... Uh, just just give us a little info on, on what you do at, at the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. Okay, so I'm part of the interpretive education department um, at the center and interpretive education, we take the, the research that's done by curatorial uh, staff and we try and uh, make it into uh, information that, that can be readily digested by the public and by school. Um, so part of that is uh, Skype in the Classroom or the virtual education program that we've been doing for the last six years. Um, and as you've said, we've been to every state in the nation and we've been to every province in Canada. And in fact, we've been to 42 countries worldwide. So it's a global reach. I mean, that's sort of the beauty of, of online education is that you can get really, really big numbers. We've got 123,058 students so far uh, in those six years. 107,000 have been in the United States, and as you said, 1,500 in Wyoming. We'd like to 
broaden our reach in Wyoming uh, if we can. So hopefully today people will get a, a little taste for it and, and we'll uh, start to see more, more kids from Wyoming. Well, we are so excited to have you. And knowing that with the COVID and, and Corona issue that hit the schools, when we started looking at, at places that had been doing this for a while and getting a grasp of it that had that experience, we thought, what a, what, what a great example right here in our home state. So with that leads us kind of this question, what makes this program something teachers, schools, and, and parents now, because they're much more involved in this mix, what, what makes this program something they should know about? Well, I guess the first thing probably to let teachers know is that it's all lined up with standards. So this slips very easily into your curriculum. We have different lessons. Um, we have four different lessons that we're offering right now, and we're working on new ones for the fall. But they're all lined up with standards. So we have Plains Indians and the Buffalo that's lined up with uh, history standards, but also uh, Indian Ed for All is a mandate now in Wyoming. And so that is going to be a lot of help. We also have a person on staff who is a Native American educator, and that's their job is to help teachers with uh, Indian Ed for All. So if you're having questions about that as teachers get a hold of us, uh, we have Trappers, Traders, and Trailblazers, the Mountain Men from 1820 to 1840 in the Northern Rockies. So that Western expansion piece, we start, you know, the early part of the Western expansion, we can help you with that. Uh, Plains Indian, the Buffalo I've mentioned. Oh, uh, animal adaptations. So that's a science standard. So uh, another one is uh, just uh, helping teachers learn how to use the resources that we have at the museum. So we have trunks that we can send out. Um, we have all kinds of materials that you can get uh, online. So teachers, I think this is just like a gold mine for teachers because it's already part of uh, what you're doing anyway and it just gives the kids a, a different view of, and, of materials and from our previous uh experience and, and conversation george i think you, you missed one of those huge pieces for all people involved in education it's free oh uh, <laughs> yeah yeah we have a very generous donor who's been funding us from the beginning and so we can offer this at no cost it's good yeah very good it's free and so, George, you, you do these programs, you know, at the, at the center, but you also offer this, you know, Skype in the classroom. James kind of mentioned it, you know, you've been doing this, this virtual learning and engaging kids and teachers, you know, for a while. Could you talk a little bit about the, the Skype in the classroom and, uh, you know, what teachers might need to do to, to sign up for this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very simple. Uh, so maybe just a little history helps Skype. Uh, probably everybody knows about Skype uh, and the various platforms that have come along since then, Zoom and, and Google Meet, and we, we can use any platform. We do our calendaring through Microsoft uh, Education uh, Network. They have a really great calendaring system. So if you go on to our website at uh, centerofthewest.org and, and uh, you'll just find the, the, the sign-up sheet, there's a calendar there so you can see where the, the openings are, what time you want to do it, and then you just sign up. We'll contact you, make sure every, all the information's there, and we're ready to go. We also have pre and post activities if teachers are interested in those as well. So, George, with that, what's you, you talked a little bit about what teachers need to do to get ready, but um, earlier in, in our, in our pre-conversation visiting, you talked about that there's kind of a, a good six-week planning period and and can you talk yeah. about that a little bit for us yeah so we we get really busy uh, <laughs> especially since uh since everybody went virtual in the spring um, we 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 had a lot of people coming um in so we are usually booked out about six weeks but don't despair um there are people who drop out or cancel for one reason or another so you just go in and look at that calendar and find a, a date that works for you, but planning is really important. So for example, we have teachers in September, August and September that are planning their curriculum for the year that have been with us before and done this, and they'll book February or March of next year so that they have their uh, slot reserved. So it's a good idea to just kind of go in, look at what you've got at, while you're planning your curriculum and, and get your dates uh, locked in and then you don't have to worry about it. So all those teachers listening to right now, if they log in, they're going to be 
kind of at the front of that list. I'll definitely had a heads up on everybody else. So that's because why are we teachers in there? Yeah, that, that that's that's what we're shooting for. So you you've done this for a while. You've 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 changed platforms. You mix things in. Talk to us about how you engage kids in a virtual environment because that is definitely something a lot of teachers were not prepared for when COVID and and all of these things hit us. That engaging them in a virtual environment is a little different than engaging in in a classroom. So talk talk to us. How do you guys work to engage those students? Well, I think you know teaching is is teaching, and uh, I've taught in classrooms and I've taught virtually, and there are a lot of similarities. the The difference with a uh, I think a virtual environment is the pace. You got to keep it moving, and also this is live so it's not canned it's not videotaped it's live and we're very interactive with kids so we're asking questions all the time they're asking us questions it's a very engaging interactive kind of thing now uh, sometimes we'll get 150 kids in an auditorium that kind of cuts down on it a little bit but you know for an individual classroom or a zoom classroom where you've got 30 kids everybody gets to uh, engage. And I've noticed that more kids engage virtually than in a real classroom because they're in a safe environment and they're able to, you know, it's a screen and, and uh, there's something about that. I, I don't know, it's very, been very interesting watching the adaptation to the, to the at-home student as opposed to the in-class student. And, and the kids have adapted very, very well. Some of the teachers have been a little freaked out, but. You know, I think we've done a great job as a profession, just rising to the occasion and getting this thing going. So, so with that, you bring up that, that it, it did freak out a lot of educators and, and parents are still dealing with that. So what, what advice do you give, not just about the Buffalo Bill Center of the West, but what, what, what advice could you give teachers as they're thinking about this as a tool, thinking about how they engage um, students with not knowing for sure what the fall might look like in classrooms. Yeah, I, I think I would get on forums, teacher forums, and uh, there's an organization, International Society for Technology and Education, ISTE, has these forums, and you can go on and you can start to see what other teachers are dealing with. I think um, that, that that really helps to get people comfortable. Other people are doing this, so you don't have to recreate the wheel. There are lots of resources out there. You know, YouTube is, is indispensable for many things, you know, from fixing light switches to anything else in the world. But, but people are talking about how, how do you manage a, a virtual classroom? How do you keep kids engaged? There's lots of great ideas out there. I think a lot of uh, time, you know, if you spend a half hour, 45 minutes, you start to get a feel for what people are doing. So as we're, we're wrapping towards the, we're riding towards the sunset here, I, I, I want to remind our, our viewers out there to make sure if you have a question, if there's something uh, you want to ask, whether it's about the center of the West or in general, uh, drop that in the chat and let, let George fire away at that. But with James, that- we have a couple questions. We have a couple okay. questions, James. Nice, I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one, of, uh, one of the Im important questions here was, uh, are the lessons for middle school too? So George, do you, do you tailor this for different developmental levels? We do. So we go all the way from K through 12 and beyond. We've, we actually had a, a college class in England that wanted to know about mountain men. It was very interesting. I, and, and we could get deep and talk philosophy and everything. We have kindergartners who we're, do, we're dealing with. So K through 12. So what we do is we know the, the grade level before we start the lesson, uh, days before we start the lesson. And then we can prepare the material. So we adjust vocabulary, we adjust concepts, and we adjust, you know, we know what the standards are for each level. And we try and tailor it to each grade level. And we've done this enough now that we, have a pretty good feel for where kids are developmentally uh, in different age levels or grade levels. Right on. That's got to be difficult, especially with those kindergartners, you know. Uh, this whole COVID thing, I'm sure, uh, yeah, really was a challenge for a lot of teachers, you know, for the, the younger kids. The concept of question somehow eludes them, you know. My, my, my colleague, her favorite uh, uh, story is that when, do we have any questions? And one girl raised her hand and said, 
I got a new toothbrush. So, you know. <laughs> Welcome to the kindergarten classroom, George. <laughs> that is it. Hey, George, we had one more question here, if it's okay if I ask. Um, um, if a teacher uses Skype, do the students also participate on one-on-one -on -one devices or does the teacher just control the session? Um, you might yeah. know this better than I do for Skype. Right. For, so I want to reemphasize that we use all kinds of platforms. And in fact, we use very little of Skype. Skype in the classroom is really great because it's, it's feed to feed. Uh, most people are using Zoom or Google Meet. Um, for the, the kids at home because you can get a lot more people in. Microsoft is pushing Teams. That's also another avenue. The teacher, uh, teachers do a number of things. Uh, it's usually easiest if the teacher is the, is the host and gives me rights to present because we have PowerPoints and things that we present during the, the lesson. Um, and they control the muting and unmuting uh, of students. Although a lot of the kids have got that concept of muting and unmuting down. So it's not so much, uh, we've seen, you know, in the, at toward, especially toward the end of the school year, everybody was pretty much on top of that. But yeah, the teacher's usually in control of who let, who's let in and who isn't let in and how to, uh, and you know, classroom management, things like that. Okay. You know, George, there's another question. And I know from our previous conversation about what time fit for you. And I know you, you, you guys at the museum have done an amazing job because you have people around the globe of fitting in times that maybe we don't even think would work. Not that a lot of classrooms in, in Wyoming want to see at one or two in the morning, but what times, I mean, you, you yeah. pretty much can make any time if it's open work. Yeah, we have, we have people there uh, six, to, six to five or six to six during the day. We have a, a Carrie who comes in at 6 a.m. because the East Coast is hitting school at eight o'clock in the morning. And so for us at 6 a.m., she's there at 6 a.m. to cover the East Coast. And then she goes home and then she comes back in the afternoon to cover the West Coast and uh, Australia and, and that side of the world. So yeah, we're, we, we're available all day long. Wow, that's well, pretty got, awesome. <laughs> I've, got, I've got one question to your big, your big finish here. Um, so can you talk to us about or, or being part of this process from start to finish there at the Buffalo Bill Center of the West, T tell us about a, a challenge that you overcame that you're just proud that you, you, we, we overcame this and we just continue to get better at it. Is there a challenge that jumps out at you to share with us? Because because we are obviously facing some challenges right now in education. So, Yeah, for us, and, and it would be a little bit different, but for us, the scheduling has been uh, a real challenge. Um, you know, when we're, we're, we're open eight, six to six and we've got, you know, teachers and we've got to get people scheduled and we've got to get classes scheduled. It has been, uh, uh, and, and with the change from Skype to Microsoft, things got a little strange for a little while, but that's kind of uh, resolved itself now. And I think that was part of it. So that and the technology, you know, the technology has got better um, in the last couple of years so that we don't have any kinds of problems anymore. I mean, once in a while we will, but but the technology has been pretty flawless recently. So those were the big challenges, I think, uh, with staffing and, and scheduling and then getting, getting the technology to work right. Well, and, and George, I think, I think all the teachers can appreciate the idea of scheduling. It seems like there's never enough oh, time yeah. in making that work. And so we appreciate all that, that you guys do up at the Buffalo Bill Center of the West to try, try to accommodate students. And, and hopefully we can have a follow-up conversation next year about how we, we reached 50,000 students across the, across the state, because it is an amazing resource. And, and, I, and I truly encourage teachers to reach out and, and try a trunk or try a, a, a Skype session or, or do those things just to give kids that experience. But we really appreciate, George, you taking the time to jump in here. I know summer, even under these circumstances, is the busiest time at the museum. And so taking time to jump in here, we appreciate it. I know Joe and I, and all the teachers listen, listening appreciate you being here today. All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, a couple things for everybody else. First off, don't forget to invite a friend next week, because next week we're going to saddle up for a conversation with Kimber Kimberly and Liliana from Sweetwater and Albany County to discuss their experiences with 
using Buffalo Bill Center of the West, as well as virtual field trips. So we're gonna kind of get that teacher side of what this looked like for planning, how they worked it into lessons, uh, how they feel comfortable, uh, mistakes maybe they made, and, and things that came out of it as well. And so we're really excited about episode two. And episode two will be next week, same time, same place. And so with that, we say happy trails to, to you. you until we see you next Tuesday. <laughs>